Would you please put your finger on the part you love most about yourself? Now, put your finger on the part you dislike most about yourself. Okay, now that we have that covered, I would like to ask you all a question. But don't answer anything yet, just really think about it and we'll come back to it later. Do you truly love yourself as you are? I remember when I was in my eighth grade health class and we were watching a documentary about eating disorders. Now, I remember I felt sorry for the people who suffered from such disorders and I remember thinking, I will never suffer from that. If only my thoughts were true. I never imagined that I would be standing here today in front of you all, saying out loud, I, Sofia Jurea, have suffered from bulimia nervosa for the past three years of my life. But the thing I simply never in my whole life even considered remotely possible is that I would be saying this while admitting that my best friend went through the same thing. For three years, I fought one of the hardest battles one can fight, that is, against my own mind. Three years of my life, I spent hating myself, harming myself, and in terrible, terrible pain. But the thing that hurt the most is the fact that my best friend was living the same nightmare. Calories, exercise, nutrition labels, scales, measuring tapes controlled her life. Food was a nightmare. She was so consumed by this horrible disease called anorexia that when the time came, she succumbed. She chose restriction over her life and health. At 38 kilograms, she was weak, she was cold, she was pale, reclusive, embarrassed of food. It was at this moment when the sight of a mental health facility was our near future that we decided we have to make a change. Enough was enough. This was when we decided to put an end to our eating disorder and not let our eating disorder put an end to us. Now, it's saddening that society believes that eating disorders are some sort of lifestyle of choice. People, eating disorders are not a choice. They are serious mental health issues that once they are a part of one's life, they consume every inch of their victim, harming not only their health, their life, but their body, their mind, and their surroundings. And this is precisely why I am here today. But now, moving on, in order to discuss eating disorders in depth, we really need to identify what these are and understand them. We will be discussing three main eating disorders today. The first one we have is anorexia nervosa, which can simply be defined as the pathological fear of food or gaining weight. However, we also have bulimia nervosa, which can be described as faulty eating with purging, laxative abuse, and overexercise. Now, my third point is binge eating disorder, which can be defined as eating past the point of fullness or past the appropriate amount of food. But what are these disorders about? Well, they are about drastic eating behaviors, diets that never end and that gradually become stricter, as well as the consequences, the radical consequences that these cause, which can in some cases lead to death. Now, hear me out. At least 30 million people suffer from eating disorder, and at least one person dies every 62 minutes from such. But let's stop right there. One person dies every hour from an eating disorder. That means that right here, in an hour, when this segment is over, one of you would be gone. And, well, as shocking as it is, the truth is as simple as that. Eating disorders have the highest mortality rate out of any other mental health condition. Now, I have always questioned why saying I have cancer or I have diabetes or any other disease is as simple as that. But when we say I have anorexia or I have bulimia or I have binge eating, people judge, people criticize and they stare. 
Now, in order to transform the mentality towards this mortal illness, we must raise awareness of it as a natural mental condition. We must take a stand in order for real action to be taken and real change to be made. Okay, so just like any other psychiatric condition, eating disorders carry biological implications. The Academy for Eating Disorders firmly states that anorexia and bulimia nervosa, along with their variants, are biologically based mental illnesses that should and need the same level and depth of health care coverage as any other mental condition. Now, due to research conducted by doctors such as Kelly L. Klum from this same academy, it has been discovered that there are genetic, hereditary, and chromosomal factors that contribute in the development of eating disorders. Additionally, it was also discovered that these disorders can mirror addictions, such as what? The National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism confirmed by gathered research that there are significant associations between eating problems and substance abuse in younger populations. Now, as we can see from all of this evidence, it is clear that eating disorders are real and severe health issues and that they have much more profound meaning than the constantly vague assumptions made. But let's just stop right there. Because it's not just about eating or the lack of such. It is about a tiny monster in my head. A tiny monster in our head that cannot seem to leave us alone. It's like a miniature bomb that just sits there, waiting, waiting for something to trigger it. Something so, so tiny or something so, so huge that it can either make the mini bomb grow and grow continuously, or it can just make it explode instantly. But either way, once it's done, whether it's now or in a few years, it can lead us to our end. But now, moving on from all of this science, let's talk social. Many people think that eating disorders are a social matter or some type of cultural disease. And it is frequently believed that these disorders derive solely and completely from social issues and social media. With this in mind, researchers from the Carnation Battle Psychiatric Institute show that there is an increasing occurrence of eating disorders associated with cultural transitions promoting the Western beauty ideal. But wait, although there seems to be a correlation here between eating disorders and social issues, we have to understand that correlation does not always mean causation. And we have to understand that cultural influences do not cover the vast, vast range of reasons behind eating disorders. Because the truth is that if media was the sole cause behind eating disorders, then it would be difficult to explain why everyone here is not eating disorder. Well now, let's look at it this way. We don't go around blaming but ways or for creating alcoholics, do we? So, why should we blame the media for creating eating disorders? Let's just think about the following. These disorders are not simply a minor benign tumor that can be dissected immediately. No. They're like a cancer. It starts metastasizing all over your body and it spreads to your mind. Sadly, yes, it can potentially kill you. But with the right treatment, patience, and a whole lot of work, it can start to diminish slowly. And that's the goal. So now, let's talk about recovery. It's been three years now since I was first diagnosed with bulimia nervosa. But to be honest, I have been struggling with that disease for a while at that point. I didn't even realize it. Now, I know I'm no doctor. But I do know that these steps are essential when it comes to recovery. First and foremost, it's just accepting your disease, coming to terms with it. Then, of course, it's identifying the symptoms. And most importantly, it's talking to someone you trust, someone who is there for you, someone who cares for you, like your mom, your dad, your best friend, or even your counselor. And at last, it's 
accepting the help that's being offered to you before it's too late. Yes, it'll take time. These are not all the steps, but you'll get there. This is precisely why it is so hard to exit this cycle. And this is where self-love barges in. The little key ingredient missing from this complex and difficult recipe for recovery. And this is where my initial question lies with me. Do you love yourself as you are? Now I saw some of you pointing to your hair as the thing you like most about yourself, or to your legs as the thing you dislike most about yourself. But guys, I wasn't really asking you to do that. I was asking you what you love about yourself, not about your body. What do you love about what's in here? What do you love about yourself, about what's past all the layers? Did you give this some thought? If you didn't get a chance to, then just let this sink through. You are worthy. You are enough. You are capable and you are beautiful. So just accept who you are. Be you for you. Because as poet Rudy Francisco once said, perhaps we should love ourselves so, so fiercely that when others see us, they know exactly how it should be done. At last, just take a moment to appreciate how marvelous you are. Give yourself a break, guys. Give yourself credit. Give yourself to you. And remember, no one is you. And that is your greatest strength. Thank you.